Creating a test in Blackboard Learn. In this video we're going to go over a quick overview of how to create a test and really what are a lot of the settings inside of the test and that's, that's where some of the most important elements will be and then how to track students uh, behavior inside of the test and activity and things like that. So to begin creating a test you'd want to go inside of your course and a test can be created um, inside of the test surveys and pools um, area under course tools. So if you go ahead and you swing down to test surveys and pools um, we can create there. Another method is to go into any content area if you've created maybe an assessments area or learning modules you can go inside any of these areas and then click on assessments and go to test and you can create it from there. But really they live, they live down here in test surveys and pools. So we're going to go ahead and begin uh, by going there. So we're going to go to test surveys and pools. From here, let's go ahead and create a test. And this is just going to be a sample test that we're going to create so we can walk through the process. So we're going to go ahead and build a test. If you're looking to import, we have some other tutorials on that. And this is going to be uh, a sample test. Here we go. We, so we put in a name we can put in a description and then it's very important that you don't put the instructions in the description area you need to make sure that your test instructions uh, they go here down under the instructions area so once you have put in the instructions for your students you then come down to submit now of course we've created a test but there's nothing inside of it at this point so what we can see is we're inside of the sample test and we're inside of the test canvas and this is where we would need to create questions or reuse questions. So if we're looking to create questions, we just come up over here to create questions. We can come down to, I don't know, let's go ahead and make uh, something simple. How about a true false? And uh, you, you can select from any of these questions. You give it a title. In this case, I'm going to call it, uh, I don't know, test, test one. Q1, but it could be whatever is appropriate to you. Then here is the question text itself. So this is, you know, um, what is up? You know, whatever whatever your question would be. Uh, of course, that's not really a, a, a true false question, but I'm just trying to give you a demonstration here. So you would type in your uh, question text, and then you select, you know, is it going to be true, false, whatever the value is. Um, and you have a variety of different options. It can be vertical, horizontal, and for each different um, question type there are a variety of different options. Here you can also enter in feedback for a correct response or feedback for an incorrect response. And we're going to look at the settings here in just a second to see when those would occur for students. So if you want to provide them specific feedback for questions individually this is where you do that when you're creating the question. Next, you can come down. You can add categories to the different questions. So you can say this is, you know, part of um, uh, maybe. Let's see. Let's see what what do I already have. Maybe I have stuff on solar systems or scientists, and I can I can add this to that category. And it's a way of of filtering information later on. Uh, you can also add instructor notes. These are not visible to the student, but they are to you. So I'll go ahead and submit. And so now this this test actually has a question inside of it. And if I already have questions that I'm using somewhere else, like maybe uh, maybe I'm creating a final exam here and I want to pull in questions from other exams that I, uh, I already have, what I can do is I can go to Reuse Questions and I can go to Find Questions. And I can I can search through all of my uh, previous exams and pull in you know some questions from from these other exams so you can search through you can find them and then we can make kind of a more comprehensive exam here so you can see that I've pulled questions from previous exams right inside of here as well and what you can see is that each each question has its own point value so right up here if I don't want this maybe I want this only to be worth uh, one point and then this one's going to be worth one point and then let's come down here and this is going to be worth one point but it's extra credit maybe. So this this exam is worth two points but it has three questions and one of them is extra credit so you know no harm no foul for getting it wrong. So at this point we've created the exam and it's worth three points or worth two points but they can get up to three because of the extra credit and I'm going to go ahead and say okay. So this has created the exam. You want to go through and just add as many questions as, as you uh, feel is appropriate. And what that's done is that it has created the exam, but it doesn't live anywhere for the students to see yet. So we can see that it uh, under the uh, deployed 
category, it says no, it's not deployed. So it's been created, but it's not deployed anywhere. This is where we're now going to decide where this is going to live. In this case, uh, I'm going to pop into uh, a content area that I've created called assessments, but it might be in a learning module or something like that for you. Inside of uh, this content area, I'm going to go up to assessments, and I'm going to go to test. So from here, I'm going to be able to identify uh, the test that I've just created. So instead of creating a new one, I go down to add an existing test, and, and here it is, and then I say submit. So once this has been submitted, it goes into the content area, and um, students are going to be able to take it. But we're going to take a look at the settings first and see how these settings work. So here are the test options. So we've got the name, and that's OK. And so right here, this is uh, the content link description. So we can add a description right here as well that students could see. So right here, what we want to do is come down and take a look. So should we show the instructions to the students before they begin the test? It's always a good idea, uh, but you don't have to do that. So here you can select show them the, the instructions or not. Next, we want to come down and do we want to open the test in a new window? Now this is really up to you. If students have pop-up blockers and issues with that, this could be a problem. Uh, if you want them to keep it inside of their main Blackboard window, uh, don't allow it to come up as a pop-up. But maybe you want them to have it in a pop-up window because you want them to be using uh, the Blackboard window for something else. Maybe it's an open book test. So in this case, if you want it to open up in a new window, this is where you would select that. Next, test availability. So should this link be available? And, and in general, we want yes. So we may add some conditions onto that. But if it says no, the students can't see it under any circumstances. So we're going to go ahead and select yes. And then are we going to add an, add an announcement for this test? And you're certainly welcome to do that. And then, then it will notify students that, that it's, uh, it's available. Um, Next, let's go ahead and take a look at multiple attempts. So how many times can the student take this test? If we select multiple attempts, you can either have unlimited attempts, or you can say maybe they can take this uh, twice. Um, you get two attempts, and, and I'm going to take the highest one, or um, something like that. And, and, and we can look at how to set that a little bit later on. So um, if you only are allowing a single attempt, what you want to do is make sure that you do not have that selected. If it's if it's just one attempt, that's all you have. Now next, force completion. Now there's a lot of controversy surrounding force completion option. So what this means is once a student begins this exam, they have to complete it in one sitting. Um, it it's good for for validity for saying you know look I don't want the student popping in and out in and out of a test. However. If a student gets logged off or kicked out of Blackboard or has a technical problem, the Blackboard system shuts down their exam and doesn't allow them back into it. So this is literally a one seating deal. If you select force completion, that means if they get logged out for any reason, they're not allowed back in. So if you want to allow the student some flexibility of being able to go in and out or maybe they get logged out and they want to come back in, do not select force completion. What you can do is go ahead and set a timer. So if you set a timer and say that they have 60 minutes to complete this, the, the clock begins the second they log into the test and continues even if they log out. So if I have 60 minutes to do it and I log in and I take a look and I go, oh, this is too much, I'm going to go back and study, I can't really cheat on this because the clock started exactly when I logged in. And I log back in 45 minutes later. I only have 15 minutes to complete the exam. So that timer keeps rolling whether I'm logged in or not. So that's something you can certainly look at. So if you don't turn on the force completion, you allow them you know, that flexibility of maybe if they get kicked out, they can come back in. Setting the timer is a very good idea. The other option that you can do is set auto submit uh, for, that, for that time. So if, if it's off, they can continue the exam even after it's expired. It will notify you that it was submitted late, but they can continue the exam. But if you want to say, no, you get 60 minutes. If you have problems, you've got to overcome them during that amount of time. Then if you turn the auto submit on at 60 minutes, whatever, you know, or whatever time frame you have uh, enabled inside of here, uh, the, the student's work will be saved and submitted automatically to you. So these are some of the different options that you can look at inside of there. Again, that force completion, it's just one shot. You sit down, you take it. If you get kicked out, too bad, so sad, that's it. Um, with the timer, you can allow auto-submit on or off, and uh, the, the clock starts from the beginning of when they log in and continues uh, un until that limit is hit, and then it can send off.
So next, here are the display after dates. So if you don't want the the uh, test visible before a certain date, you would go ahead and select display after, and then you can select you know when when do you want this exam to be visible. If you if you want it to maybe it's a final exam you want it to be due uh, at the end of the semester you just set a display date that hides it until that time. If you only want the uh, exam to be available until a certain time, this is where you do the display until dates as well. So it becomes invisible after the until date. Next, you can add a password. So this is a proctor password. If uh, you're going to have the exam proctored somewhere, you can select this and put in a password. Um, and uh, this is this is who you would give to the proctor, something like that. And so nobody could take this exam without entering uh, the password that you select. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at test availability exceptions. This is uh, really critical. It's covered in, in another tutorial as well, but I'll talk about it briefly here. If you need to add an exception for a student or groups of students, what you can do is you can click the Add an Exception. And it's going to say, OK, let's look at a user or maybe groups of users. Um, and so in this case, let's say maybe I'm, uh, Tony Brown um, missed the exam and I want to give them uh, another chance. So instead of a single uh, attempt, maybe I'll allow multiple attempts and give them uh, two attempts instead of just one. Maybe they had a computer problem. I don't know. Um, or maybe they, they still get a single attempt. However, for them, it's going to be available just a little bit longer. Okay, so you can adjust the availability dates for the students. Um, you can adjust the number of attempts, or maybe this student gets uh, 120 minutes. Maybe they have a, a, a letter from the Access Center. So I can come down here and I can make a uh, a test availability exception to allow them another attempt, and I can add uh, different ones for 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 different students. So maybe maybe he gets 120 minutes, um, but maybe Ashby here um, gets gets two attempts because maybe something went wrong with Ashby's, but I want it to have the regular time, something like that. So we can customize this without having to recreate the exam. We can just go through and add exceptions on how we want to deliver it. So next is the due date, and this is a really critical thing, the due date. So up here we looked at availability. Availability says it can be shown or not shown before or after these times, and the due date is when the system knows that this is due. Now, it's not a hard date. Students can still submit after this due date if you allow them to, but it's critical that you enter in a due date because that will enter uh, an announcement or uh, a notification inside of the calendar that, that it's, it's due, um, and it creates multiple areas inside of the system that says that, that this is due for the student. So next, we want to come down, and you can select do not allow students to start the test if the due date has passed. So if you say no, the due date is the due date, I don't accept late work, this is what you select, and then no student can submit after that due date has, has passed. So next, you can make this a self-assessment. Let me caution you on this. If you go ahead and say hide the results, truly you can't recover it. It's, it's hidden. You can't get to them. Uh, there's no back door to get to this information. It becomes a self-test and, and you cannot um, get to their information. You can't, you can't uh, tell what kind of score they got on it. So if it's going to be included inside of the Grade Center, um, you, you, you just want to make sure that this first one is selected and do not select the, the second one. Next, when we come down, we're going to look at the feedback. I, I mentioned that we would talk about this um, earlier. So you have a couple of different feedback options that you can do here. So here you can say, when are they going to get the feedback? Is it a one-time view? Do they get to see it one time? Um, do they get to see it on a specific date um, or after a specific date? Maybe it's after the availability uh, is ended or maybe after all the attempts at the class are, 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 are completed. And then you can say, what, what can they see? Can they see their score? Can they see all the answers? Or maybe they can only see the answers they submitted. Or maybe they can see the correct answers and the ones they submitted and their score. And then here we can say, should they see the feedback? Should they see the um, uh, incorrect questions? So you can put together whatever blend that you feel is appropriate as a learning tool for your students. Next, as we come down, uh, we can take a look at uh, test presentation. Should all of these questions be presented in one long list? Or should they be one at a time? And if they are one at a time, we can say you can see it once and you can't come back to it, or we can leave it open and they can see it, go a little further down the line, and say, oh, wait a minute, I think maybe I got that one and go back to it. So you have these options right here. I, I strongly recommend um, one at a time, though if you choose all at once, you know, that certainly works as well. Another 
good option to have is to randomize the questions. And so this goes through and, and for each attempt, right, so every student is going to get the, uh, the questions in a random order. Um, this is a great uh, option to do inside of here and uh, can, can definitely just, just discourage maybe academic dishonesty. So once all of this is done, we've entered in all of our due dates, we've configured all of our feedback, we go ahead and click Submit and it's off for the student. At this point it would become accessible whenever we have the uh, availability date set for and the students would be able to access it. Now once a student has uh, taken the exam, uh, we, we have to go through and take a look and, 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 and look at the grade. So if you've done anything, if you set it something up where you have maybe a paragraph or short answers, the, the system can't automatically answer those for you so, or grade those for you. So you're going to have to go in and take a look and, and grade some of these um, assessments. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and we're going to take a look at how to uh, how to look at the grade on an assessment. So we're going to begin by opening up our Grade Center and if we've set up Smart Views we can go to Tests but in this case I'm just going to go to Full Grade Center. You can use Need Grading uh, but I, I, I really strongly recommend using the actual uh, Full Grade Center itself. So in this case we have a, a whole series of quizzes that uh, some of my, my students have taken and so what we're going to do is we can tell that they need some attention right here because they have the exclamation mark but instead of clicking on that exclamation mark, um, because here I can enter a grade, but this is really a manual override, what I want to do is I want to see the, the, students, um, the students' work. I want to see their answers. So I hover over that exclamation mark, move just over to the right, and click on the action link item, and here I'm going to go ahead and look at the attempt. So if I click on the attempt, it's going to come up and here it is. So inside of the attempt I can see okay here's here's what they did so they answered you know uh, this question with Venus it was correct answer Mars great Jupiter great and I can see the number of points here and then I get down to an essay question and this is where I can see the students response and then I can give it a grade here so maybe they get uh, 10 out of 20 10 out of 20 and I can give them f feedback right inside of here depending on how I've done uh, the settings inside of my exam. And then, uh, and this is question by question, then I can give overall feedback for the entire uh, course. And then if I want to take grading notes, these are just for me, these will not appear to the student. And then I'm going to go ahead and say save and next. And so what it's going to do is it's going to save uh, my grading and my responses, uh, shoot those back to the student if I've configured it that way, and then you can tell that I'm, I'm grading the next student right here so I can just go straight down the line. So if I'm grading an essay question that's how I would do it inside of there. Now there's something a little bit more that that I'd like to talk about inside of here and that is to look at the test information. So if we look at test information we can open this up and we can see a little bit more information what's going on here. So like when did the student actually start this exam and and when was it submitted. Um, if I want to take a look at the actual detailed you know click by click I can click on the access log and in this case because it's just a, a demo student it doesn't show anything but um, for uh, real students it would show step by step everything they did inside of here uh, how long they spent on each question and I can really get a breakdown of what's going on um, and, and that's really valuable information to check that access log. So finally, uh, once I've done all this, if I truly needed to clear an attempt, if I click clear attempt, it destroys, completely wipes, wipes out, irrecoverable, uh, the student's previous submission. Chances are it's better to go ahead and make an exception and give them another attempt as opposed to clearing an attempt. So you want to be very, very careful with, with that. But all this can be found here underneath the test information. Um, and finally, when I'm all done, you know, I can just go ahead and say save and exit and uh, then I'll be able to look in that column and, and make sure that uh, these students have received the grade that I've entered. So I should see right there, there's Ashby Cooper, um, they've received the grade, so it's good to go. So that's the long and short, or actually the very short of how to create, implement, and, and uh, work with the settings on a test. I hope this helps. Thank you.